Hey Jitsers, uh, so today I'm here in Ljubljana at uh, Gracie in Papa with a good friend of mine, uh, Professor Carlos Maya and one of his best competitors, Nate. So uh, he's going to tell us a Jiu Jitsu story. Take it away, Professor. Okay, I start Jiu Jitsu when I was very young, you know, I was 13 years old, 12 to 13, I don't know exactly, long time ago. And I, I, at that time I moved to a, a new neighborhood, I didn't know a lot of people. And I was looking for a martial arts, something to socialize. I was really young and looked for some friends. That was the goal at, at first. I was good at soccer, but in this place there was no soccer. And I said, well, okay, so let's look for something. I did karate when I was a kid. I did a little bit of karate. So I was looking for martial arts. And some, most of my friends, they were doing Muay Thai because at that time we have a few challenges in Rio de Janeiro what, what made uh, Muay Thai very popular. Uh, at that time we have like in Rio de Janeiro, this was 1990. So in, in, in Brazil we have the Jiu Jitsu guys, we have the guys from Luta Livre, that was a kind of a wrestling, and also have the guys from Muay Thai, you know. But Muay Thai and wrestling, and these guys, Luta Livre and Muay Thai, they were together, they trained together. So basically, the guys from Muay Thai, they also knew the Luta Livre, you know. And I was looking for a martial art, but I didn't know nothing about this. I just want to train something. But in my neighborhood where I live, there was no Jiu Jitsu, like a Gracie Jiu Jitsu. There was a lot of styles there. I remember that they have like uh, two or three Jiu Jitsu schools, but they didn't have Gracie Jiu Jitsu. Because at that time in Brazil was like, you have a Gracie Jiu Jitsu school and you have a Fada Jiu Jitsu school. So, or the guys come from Fada Jiu Jitsu or from Gracie Jiu Jitsu. And I was talking with a friend of mine, I remember he told me, because all my friends, they want to do my Thai, and I, I want to do my Thai too, but this friend of mine convinced me to try Jiu Jitsu. And then I was looking for a school, and by lucky, I, I passed. And the first Jiu Jitsu, Gracie Jiu Jitsu school of my neighborhood popped up in front of my house. We are really lucky, you know, like a few meters, I was going to the dentist and I, I saw Gracie Jiu Jitsu here and I walk in alone, you know, usually people start martial arts, they go with their parents, you know, I went alone, you know, so I was 12 years old, I was really afraid, I step in, start to look around and I remember the teacher, this guy whose name was Carlos Augusto, my first teacher, hey champion, come in, start already, call me champion, it was like, different for me and that, 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 that my first part of Jiu Jitsu was that he came I entered the, the mats and I said what is Jiu Jitsu could you tell me and he said do you want to know what is Jiu Jitsu okay so you step in and I take the shoes off then I take, took the shoes off and when I entered the mats he just grabbed me by the neck what you do now and I was like 12 years old I, I freezed you know, I didn't know what to do, and he came to me and said, you know how to skate? I said, no, okay, hold me back. And then I hold him with the headlock, and he took me down once, twice, three times, like, like magic. And I was like, man, please show me. And then he showed me the, the movement, and he said, if you want to train, you can come tomorrow. And that's how I started Jiu Jitsu. This person, also, he was the one that, uh, convinced me to start teaching Jiu Jitsu because I, I started Jiu Jitsu with him. But when I was 16, 17, I started training Gracie Bar because I have goals to become a champion. He also think was important, so I moved to Gracie Bar. I met Carlos Gracie, and then I, I really developed myself technically. Master Carlos was super important in my life. He was a real mentor. But this man that introduced me to Jiu Jitsu, my first teacher, he was very important for me too. You know, he was, when I was 19 to 20, I got one of my purple belt, and then he said, You should teach Jiu Jitsu. You know? And then I started teaching. At that time, it was not so, so common to find people teaching 
But in my neighborhood, there was no jiu-jitsu. So I started teaching very similar to what you do, you know, there was nobody to train. And then I started to teach my friends. And at the same time, I was training at Grace Bar. And the things started to go in this way. I dedicated my life to jiu-jitsu. And there are some good stories, you know, from that time. But basically, that's how I started. At that time, uh, I, I remember you telling us a story uh, when we were in Skladin. Uh, Carlos hosts uh, uh, annual uh, uh, training camp in Skladin, which you guys should definitely check out because it's like the best thing possible. You can go there for four days and it's like training your ass off with beasts from all around the world. It's really cool. But I remember you telling us a story that you, you used to do is to rap, oh, right? Yeah. Oh, so yeah. before you came to Slovenia, uh -huh. you, you, you had like, if I remember correctly, you had like three choices what to do in life, like law, rap, and jiu-jitsu. Yeah, it was That's, like, that was fun. you know, I jiu-jitsu was always my passion, you know, but I remember not many people was able to live from jiu-jitsu, you know, like it was not a reality. It was a dream, but not a reality. There was no professional athlete at that time in the 90s. It was, the, the competition was just starting, you know, and that was, I always wanted to do jiu-jitsu for my life, but it was not, I didn't even think much about living from it. So I was just thinking, if I can keep jiu-jitsu in my life, it would be great. So I kept the teaching, and at the same time I started the University of Law. And during the process, like on the second or third year of the law uh, university, I used to listen to rap when I was younger, and some friends that I had, they started to organize a battle, like a like an Eminem battle, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and they invited me, and they knew that I knew how to rap, and they started to ask me, can we do that? And when I saw I was already on the stage, and it started like a small thing, and then started to grow, 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 and it, it grew a lot, and I was maybe, one of the guys that was really doing this good in Brazil. So I was doing freestyle rap, so I had the possibility to become a rapper, right? Huh? But I don't know if it was a good, to be a good choice. And jiu-jitsu was always my passion, so I took the rap with me till I could, but came into a level that I couldn't do it. It was a hobby, but it started to be too professional because I, people invited me to work on this. And at the same time, I, I was finishing university, so at the same year I get the, the black belt, I get the diploma, and I, I was in rapping at that time. So I had to make a decision. I was in a crossroad, and I decided for Jiu Jitsu. You know, I think that was what I, lo I love to do. I imagine myself doing this to the rest of my life. So I think I did a good decision. Uh, how did you, uh, what made you choose Slovenia? Oh man, that's a question that you think a lot. I didn't choose Slovenia, actually this week, it's maybe this week at 12, I think 13th of March, 10 years ago, 2008, I came to Slovenia for the first time. So it's actually 10 years now, the time we're living in Europe. Is that I know the country. Well, th that was an invitation for me to come to, to train a, an MMA fighter. A friend of mine made this contact and asked if I would like to come. And I came, I teach for three months, and people invited me to come back in 2009. And then I came back in 2009, and they really asked me to come to stay a little longer. And then 2010, I decided to move. Slovenia, and it was once again a great decision. I really like the country. I made friends. We are my family now here. That's great. Jiu Jitsu connecting people. Uh, when I first started doing Jiu Jitsu, uh, I was actually coached by some of your then white belts. You know, mm -hmm. I knew I knew of Carlos even way before I met you. Way uh -huh. before, you know, I I knew that there was this Carlos dude that was like. Good at this it was black belt. I heard a lot of things about you, you know, but I didn't meet you until I, th I think I met you in Sydney yeah. first year. I think we met there, yeah. But I heard, I heard a lot of people uh, talk about you. So basically, uh, 
you are my first instructor, although, although we never trained together when I was starting this. Uh, so thank you, Professor, for the, for the time, for the interview. You guys can go check the uh, website from Grace Papa Yudana. This is a wonderful place, wonderful people, and if anybody is in the vicinity, I would strongly suggest you go and visit them. This is a really nice gym, and uh, I should come here more often as well. I'll see you all in the next episode of Jiu Jitsu Stories. Was, was.